I think that this chapter is packed, jam-filled with a bunch of very interesting things that you can very easily just over-exaggerate and theorycraft and play down all of these different lines. But when you just set it out flat, just talk about it, just think about it, there's way more going on here. And I'm on the edge of my seat because originally I read this chapter start to finish and thought, you know what, that seems pretty safe. It seems like a pretty nice conclusion, but very quickly I clicked and I was like, wait, 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 I missed something. I felt off. So I went back to read it and I noticed the momentum of the chapter kind of picks up very quickly towards the end and it comes in two different forms. It's going to be a very big kind of summoning event, at least theoretically. It feels like we're turning the corner into a pretty big reveal. We have a lot of reveals in this. The first thing for this is the beginning of the chapter. We have the Chainsaw Man Church kind of operating in full swing. They're going hard against the Chainsaw Man Church. Any sort of location that you can think of, they're going in, beating them up, taking them away, and pretty much pinning everything that you can imagine that's bad on top of them. They are doing a lot of bad things as well. It's not just like false fabrication pinning, it's quite legitimate. They are selling devil contracts to miners and building an artificial army of followers to obviously do what they wanted to do. What's interesting about public safety however and how they're operating with this is that they're very intricate they're very prepared they're very well adjusted and timed to kind of swoop in swoop out and dismantle everything in succession of one another this isn't something that's sporadic this isn't something that has just been thrown together on the last minute this is something that has been planned and it seems very much helmed by the likes of Yoshida who has garnered pretty much a majority of this information over his tenure with going to school with Denji following Denji making sure that he's okay, making sure to threaten him, to push him in a different direction, but also making contact with Fami, also learning the idea of Nostradamus's prophecy, and also trying to work out what that is. So there's a lot of information that he would have had to gone through, and it seems like that he has prepared himself very accordingly uh, to kind of mitigate everything before it even starts. He suspected, I assume, uh, that Chainsaw Man Church would make its move, and the more that it built its popularity publicly, the more he was kind of on edge about it, waiting to pull that trigger. They did. Chainsaw Man Church tried to send their hybrids out to make a big scene. Hmm. Leave a like and subscribe. Like, this preparation seems really intelligent, seems really brilliant, but is a little bit scary. Not everyone seems to be in the loop, and there's a lot of mystery surrounding the Chainsaw Man Church's intentions. It seems like no one knows what the Chainsaw Man Church was trying to do. That's a very big issue. They think they were trying to play quote-unquote Chainsaw Man, just trying to be this artificial version of him, but then they also try to recruit him. And if Fami's goal is to stop Nostradamus's prophecy, she's going through every length to be able to do it. However, they also recognize that there was the potential of Asa weaponizing Denji, which would have killed two birds with one stone. They wanted that to actually happen, so they wouldn't have to worry about Denji separately. They have a good amount of information, and a lot of it seems solid, but at the same time, they still don't know what Fami's doing. They still don't know the actual reality of what changed Men Church is trying to achieve, nor do they even know what Nostradamus' prophecy is. The Age of Devils is very far and broad. What does that actually entail? What does that summon? What does that bring forth? What is Fami preparing for? What really throws a wrench into this whole thing and just makes it show that even as well prepared as public safety is, they don't really know what's going on. They're kind of just following the very surface level information that they have and are starting to find out more and more sinister and confusing things. The justice devil that Fami had in her control is not actually the justice devil. This is a problem. For the first time, we're seeing a devil name consultant, a professional in finding out the naming of devils that have passed away. You you know that big worm? Massive thing that Fami was utilizing. Originally, she was going to put Arsa and War inside of that to starve her out to eventually control her. That is the Justice Devil. Everything that has happened since then, because that devil was killed by Denji, was not the Justice Devil. So all those people, that old man just recently, that transformed in the name of the Justice Devil, is not actually that. They had to double take that, by the way. The person asking didn't even believe that the big devil he's looking at, big worm fella, was actually the Justice Devil. So it brings up a very interesting and a little bit more sinister question. Who are they contracted with? Where are they getting these contracts from? How is Fami kind of funneling these contracts through certain devils potentially to these humans? Why does it mimic the justice 
attributes in some instances. Do you see how problematic this can be? So we're looking at something that is very powerful, that can give a lot of contracts out to people, that can transform humans very easily and to create what I would consider artificial or pseudo fiends. Kind of like this oddly blend of a hybrid, but not a natural hybrid, but still being kind of fiend orientated, uh, contracted over, still having kind of human resemblance, but also devil control. It's a bit weird. Think Yuko at the beginning of the story. There's a high probability that that wasn't the work of the justice devil either. Whatever devil she came in contact with, quote unquote justice devil that we've seen so far is not the justice devil. Even the one right at the beginning of the story is probably not even the justice devil, but something in disguise. This is a problem. We don't know what those things that were mimicking the justice devil, if it has always been this worm. And this worm seemingly has been around for quite some time. It is a big boy. They don't naturally start off that big. It has to grow, right? So you feed it more and more, bigger and bigger. What was the devil at the beginning? What about the devil that Yuko encountered? What about all of the people that are contracted with Chainsaw Man Church using Justice Devil? Do you see the big, glaring, scary issue? We don't know what it is. But it makes so much sense that something has been hiding in plain sight this entire time. Right from chapter one, knowing Fujimoto, this is going to be one of the most vital and important parts of the story. That whatever was puppeteering as the Justice Devil is something a lot scarier. I'm excited. Now we finally get to see Asa Mitaka. It's great. However, not in the best situation. Obviously, public safety are gunning for her. She's the poster child of the Chainsaw Man Church, but I'm very happy that we get to see her reaction to what the Chainsaw Man Church is doing. She's appalled by it, which should be obvious. She's not supporting the Chainsaw Man Church. She never wanted to kind of be a part of it in the way that they're proposing it. She was doing it for her own intentions. Over time, obviously, those things become a lot more addicting and a lot more corruptive when it comes to popularity and fame and friendship, which is something, mind you, that she's never had, so it's a whole new experience for her. You can't necessarily blame her. She didn't know nothing about. A lot of the students, pretty much all of them, knew nothing about it. She gets pulled up on, however, with one of the scariest opponents she'd probably ever face, which is Yoshida. And I'm very happy that out of all the people, Yoshida is the one that went, because he knows that war is going to be a handful to deal with. She's not weak, especially over this time period where Asa and war have gotten closer and are able to communicate and switch bodies very easily and just control their weaponry extremely well. Asa was ready to throw it down. She wasn't just going to give it up. It actually seems like a lot of the experience has come pretty much full circle. She has a lot of confidence within herself right here. She prepared something that would happen if any attackers were to come for her while she was doing all of the things that she was doing. This is really smart. What she wants to do, however, is completely wild. She wants to turn the whole room into a weapon. This is the worst matchup for her because Yoshida is so incredibly experienced and he also knows a little bit too much about her. And he doesn't go easy either. He comes through swinging. Of course, Asa loses that confrontation. She loses an arm too. So she's going to be taken into custody, most likely questioned, get her arm back, etc. And kind of everything's most likely going to quiet down for a moment. But the scariest thing I was kind of talking about at the beginning in terms of like something about to kick off and explode, Barum, right? He is about to get arrested by a lot of public safety because obviously this operation is going down in different parts. Barum's still with Denji and he's singing Kumbaya. He specifically asked for the sunset to go down while he's singing this. Now naturally, this seems fine. It's like, okay, you want to kind of do your last bit of freedom, enjoy yourself, etc, etc. But there's something very odd in the way that he's kind of singing this and also kind of looking at the sunrise get lower and lower. I don't know if he was hoping for something to happen, if he's expecting for something to happen, but Kumbaya is very choicey. And this could just be, again, Fujimoto playing into relevancy, playing into a very well-known song or phrase, biblical verse, whatever. But when it does come to the biblical verse, the song's definition, or at least translation for the most part, is that of someone seeking or asking God for help upon the weak. Now, would Barum do this? Most definitely. He could just be singing a song. He could be praising to a God that's about to arrive because the sunset has come down. That was the mindset that I was in. That's the 
thought process I had that something is about to arrive here while everything and everyone is split and the only person that might be able to stop anything that comes from whatever Barum's doing is Denji. Yoshida's busy with war, public safety is split all over the place. This would be the prime perfect time for a massive scale attack that none of them actually expect. Does that sound like an over exaggeration? Of course, a hundred percent. This is me just sitting in my head, but I do think it could be possible. In saying that, we do have a chapter next week, so it's most likely not going to be any of this, and it's just going to be them in a prison holding cell getting questioned.